when my parents would ground me, um, my punishment was that I wasn't allowed to wear my designer clothes. <laughs> Welcome to Off The Hanger. This week's guest is costume designer, Lindsay Keir. She's worked on some amazing Hollywood movies, incredible TV shows, and brilliant commercial projects. She's also the founder of The Costume Consultant, helping people break into a career in costuming. We had a fabulous chat about all the amazing fashion finds in her wardrobe. Lindsay, thank you so much for joining us on Off The Hanger. I am not only very, very excited about having a rummage through your wardrobe, I am unbelievably excited to talk to you about your incredible career. Great. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. So you are a, you work in costume and you have two parts of your career, don't you? So you've worked on some incredibly huge things with incredibly well-known faces, but then you also have a new project, I believe, which is the Costume Consultant. Mm -hmm. So can you tell me a little bit firstly about your uh, kind of styling costuming career and then we'll go on to the Costume Consultant. Sure. Um, so I've always had a love for clothes ever since I was little and we'll get that into that a little later. Um, but when I lived in New York, I started in fashion and I learned about styling when I worked at Ralph Lauren. He used to bring in a stylist to put all the looks together for his runway shows. And once I found that was an option as a career, I just chased it down. And so I started styling um, part-time mm -hmm. while I was still working in corporate fashion. And then I jumped ship and started styling. And then I moved to Los Angeles and really wanted to work in TV and film. And I started off as a costume PA and worked my way up through the department. Um, and then I um, have been traveling for the last six years, working as an assistant costume designer, associate costume designer. And then about a year ago, I started the Costume Consultant, um, which is a business helping people that work in the industry navigate their career, as well as allowing a pathway for people that have always had the dream of working in costumes. I help them. I help them make that come true. It's super exciting, and I definitely think it is something that is really needed. It's a career that so many people want, but I feel often there's gatekeepers. People gatekeep the information rather than sharing the information on how to get into it and best practices and who to contact if you're interested in it. So, have you got any tips that you could give? the people watching off the hangar, if they were interested in a career in costuming, what they'd need to do? Sure. Well, the first thing to do is go to my website, thecostumeconsultant.com, and schedule a 10-minute free discovery call. And we can go over everything that you've been thinking of, dreaming of, um, any ideas. We talk about where you live, any obstacles that might um, come up. But and then eventually, you know, we can sign up and, and I have a program that teaches you everything about the industry and networking. I teach a lot of things that they don't teach in school when you go to school for costume design, because a lot of people think that you have to go to school for costume design. Um, but I teach really the practical skills. So you were I'm guessing you were always into fashion. Were you very fashionable as a child? Yes. Um, my mom loves to tell this story. In kindergarten, I was obsessed with wearing dresses and skirts. And I grew up in New York, so there's winter. And I, I think I started kindergarten when I was four. I insisted on wearing dresses and skirts every single day. So the compromise was, is that I would wear pants underneath my skirts or dresses to school. And then when we got there, I would take them off and make her take them home. And then she would bring them back when she picked me up. So that was the compromise. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that you weren't willing to sacrifice it. You weren't willing to submit. You were like, nope, nope. This is what I'm wearing. Even at yeah. four, you were very much. I had a look. I had a be. vision. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what's the oldest thing you've got in your wardrobe? Are you somebody that tends to mm. hang on to things? Yes. So speaking about kindergarten, I've had these earrings oh, since probably 1985. I don't know if you can see them. They're kind of like um, that 90s, 80s, 90s rapper style gold, and it has an <laughs> L on them. 
And so <laughs> I wore these when I was four and five years old, and I still wear them today. Amazing. <laughs> what an incredible thing to have managed to keep hold of all that time. <laughs> yeah. And I get the most co like compliments on them all the time. And people want to know where I got them, but they're, they're, they're original. They're not the knockoffs that you can find today. So that's incredible. So how on earth did you get those? Did you convince your mom to buy them? Probably. I mean, she, I mean, back then too, it, like, you know, having your name on everything was really popular. Like I had the ID bracelets when I was little and um, so I think my mom actually bought them for me and she just, she, she had the eye for them and I, and they stayed in a jewelry box for probably 25 years. And I came across them when she was like, get your stuff out of my house. And, <laughs> um, yes. And I was so excited that those, uh, you know, that those, they, uh, were still around. So. <laughs> I love those. They're yeah. such a good find. Um, so what's the piece in your wardrobe you would say gets the most compliments other than those earrings? Um, I would say I'm wearing it. So I have this dress that I knock off constantly because I really love the pattern. This fabric is vintage fabric. A friend of mine when I was working in Australia, she's a collector of vintage fabric. And so she generously donated it to me to make this dress for me. And every time I wear it, I get the most compliments. I can imagine, because I imagine it's very beautifully fitted if it's something that's been made for you. Yes, yes. Um, because yes. it's always the fit that's made the break, isn't it? Yeah, and so this dress, I originally had it knocked off, which means um, have the pattern made and, and make it into something else. Um, I, the original dress was this vintage, this vintage dress here. And I loved it so much that I've probably had four dresses made in this pattern, but I, I changed things out. Like these, this has like these like little bows on them. So I'll take the bows off and I really love buttons and, you know, just changing little thing details like that completely changes the vibe. So even though I have like four of the same dresses style wise, they look completely different. Yeah. You would never realize that they were the same, same pattern. Yes. Yes. Are you somebody who likes to have a bit of a splurge when it comes to fashion or um, have you gotten most expensive things? You don't have to tell us how much. You don't sure. Yeah. I'm not one to splurge. I'm really, um, I really love finding a good deal. I love thrifting. I love shopping online. If I see something in the store, then I'll go online and I'll look at Poshmark, which is like a resale place in the States. Um, I'll look on eBay. I'll look to see if other places have that on sale. I love finding a good deal or I'll wait a little bit for it to go on sale. But the most expensive thing I own um, is something that was gifted to me from a former boyfriend. But it's a Louis Vuitton denim bag. And at nice. this point, I think it's pretty vintage because I got this in like 2005. So it's almost... I think, it's, I think it's there. Years. Yeah, it's almost 20 years. So this is probably the most expensive thing that I own. And do you still use it? I don't. I don't. <laughs> so uh, for me, I like to, I think I need to wait a little longer before the style comes back around because it was so um, popular, the denim um, print. So, you know, a little bit more time and then, and then I'll start using it again. And people, you know, I have to let people forget about it and then... I'll bring it back. That's it then, bring that trend on back. I love that. Yeah. What's the newest piece you've got in your wardrobe? Um, one of the newest pieces is probably this camp shirt that I have. And same thing, I originally had this vintage silk camp shirt and I loved it so much that I've had it knocked off many times and, and made for me in different fabrics. So I have this wonderful cutter fitter here in Atlanta named Maria Harper and she makes a lot of my clothes and so I have probably about four of these shirts in different um in different fabrics I love this I love this idea of finding things that really suit you and that you're really comfortable in and then having them remade in other fabrics and other prints and colors I think mm. it's such a good idea and um, is it do you find it's quite expensive to do that or do no. you find it's actually cheaper than 
I think it's more affordable, it, it, especially if you're willing to spend money on clothes in general, than to find something and have it actually fit you really well. And it's one of a kind. And if you, you know, if you go hunting for fabrics that you really love and then finding, you know, the buttons or the zippers and it's really like an experience and it's, it's just, it always makes me feel really special knowing that I really put a lot of effort into um, cr like creating this, right? I didn't make it myself, but I, I was part of the creation of it. So, you know, usually to make a shirt, um, it's probably like between three and $400. I tend to have relationships with people and um, you know, especially with the costume consultant now, I, I'm able to share my services. And so we do a little negotiating and, and working on prices and stuff like that. But um, I really think that if you're able to find somebody that can make clothes for you, it's it's so special and not a lot of people know about this. Um, so, and if you can't get somebody to make clothes for you, I think tailoring is really important. I'm really tall, I'm 5'11". I have a long torso and I have long legs. So I'm not really an off the rack person. I tend to have to buy things bigger and then have because of the length and then I have them tailored down. So I think being able to have your, your clothes tailored, even if it's just a little bit, they just fit so much nicer and, and you look really your best. And I think actually having things tailored in can be quite affordable. Over yeah. here, there's lots of, you know, dry cleaners and things that do alterations and tailoring. And exactly. It does make all the difference all to the have difference. things that fit perfectly to the body. Yeah. Are you somebody who's quite sentimental when it comes to the things in your wardrobe? Absolutely. Do you have a most sentimental piece? Absolutely. I am a collector. So, um, and I collect things also that I don't even wear, but if I'm attracted to them or if, you know, if, um, they just have a special meeting, I, I tend to, like I just said, I'm attracted to things like things really call to me, um, similar with different things in my house, you know, different pieces of furniture or art or something. Um, I'm, I'm not really somebody that just needs to buy things to buy things. So I will wait. And then if I see something, I'm like, yes. So some things that I've kept over the years, though, um, was this necklace. If you can't tell, I really like jewelry. <laughs> <laughs> um, this necklace, I'm not sure if you can see it, is a um, piece that my mom had when my parents um, split up. My mom made her rings into this piece of jewelry for me. So then I get to hold on to it and it became something completely new. So this is really sentimental to me. Also this necklace that I'm wearing is a Peridot necklace that was my great grandmother's. And I'm a really big advocate for wearing the jewelry. A lot of people don't want to, you know, wear things that, that belong to their mothers or their grandparents or something. They think that they should just hold on to it and keep it in a jewelry box or it's too fancy. I don't think it's too fancy. I wear this stuff. I wear this with my vintage t-shirts and jeans and, you know, because I, I figure that it's better to be seen and, and to be used than to be sitting in a jewelry box for years, you know? That's it. Use it rather than just letting it gather dust. And I think the people that these pieces belong to would much rather that we were wearing them rather than they were just sitting there hidden away. Exactly. Exactly. Another kind of like novelty piece that I have I've never worn it and it's also one of a kind. So I worked at Coach Handbags for a couple of years. I worked in their fabric department and they would have sample sales. And so they would sell their samples that it never went into production. So I have this dress that is a Coach pattern dress that is one of a oh. kind. I've never worn it and I've probably had it for about 20 years and it just goes from place to place with me. <laughs> oh my goodness there would be people killing for I that know dress. sometimes I'm like maybe I should see how much I could get for this thing yeah um, but yeah and to me I'm like I, I would never wear it anyway if I could fit into it but I, I just think that it's so cool and one of a kind that I had to have it <laughs> I love that. what's the piece in your wardrobe that you would say most sums you up so even though I was just saying how many dresses I, I love to wear, I really am known for my vintage t-shirts. 
and I wear them every single day, every place I go, um, you know, whether it's on a job or vacation, I'm always on the hunt for vintage t-shirts. So um, here's one that says Arkansas. I've never been to Arkansas in my life. So every, every time I wear it, people are like, are you from Arkansas? I'm like, no, I'm actually from New York. <laughs> but um, so I really love collecting vintage t-shirts. Um, this one is, this one does say Ithaca and I went to Ithaca College in upstate New York. And so I thought this was a really cool one and a throwback to um, where I went to, went to school. So I'm really known for vintage t-shirts, I would say. And how do you style those? What do you wear them with? Like I said, I wear them with my fancy jewelry and jeans, um, sometimes a blazer or a cool jacket. Um, so I try to dress them up a little bit. They're really cool. I love how individual they are as well, but they're all really unique. You're never going to bump into somebody else wearing the same t-shirt as you. Exactly. Exactly. And it's always like, you know, a hunt trying to find a vintage t-shirt that doesn't have stains or holes or, you know, things like that. I really wish that I had held on to a lot of my t-shirts from the nineties because now they're totally back again, but I, there's only so much room that I can have in my house. <laughs> That's it. Hindsight is always an absolute killer when it comes to the things that we have uh, gotten rid of. Yeah. <laughs> now, have you ever had a wardrobe malfunction or a fashion faux pas that you could share with us? I was trying to think about this because I'm like, have I ever been in that situation? And to be honest, it wasn't really a wardrobe faux pas, but um, I was at a bar and there was a guy that I was really interested in. I was trying to impress and I had gone to the bathroom and I came out. And he pointed out to me that I had toilet paper stuck to the bottom of my shoe. <laughs> it's a classic. It's a classic. It has happened to all of us. And it is just every single time it doesn't get any less embarrassing. Oh, no. and it's like, why didn't I look down? Like, what was I doing? I was looking here in the mirror trying to make sure like everything up here was good. And like, you know, and then, uh, yeah, always look down. <laughs> always check. Always yeah. check before you leave the bathroom. Just a little glance down just to make sure that you're clear. Yes, between that <laughs> and making sure that nothing's tucked into your underwear. So <laughs> Yes, exactly. That your dress isn't tucked into your pants yet. Yes. Um so can you show us are you quite a shoe girl? Do you like shoes? Have you got a favorite pair? I am a shoe girl. Um I really into comfortable shoes and also because I'm five eleven, I'm not really into heels. I might wear like a small wedge, but I've never really been into heels. So what I love, and I love to keep my shoes, like my clothes. So I really do invest in repairing them, getting them fixed, you know, over the years. Um, I think that's really important with your shoes. We fix the heels, fix the sole of the shoe, get them, you know, cleaned up and stuff. And, I, and also, if you spend money on shoes, then they're going to last longer. You know, if you buy shoes that are plastic or from Target or some, a cheap place, they're going to smell, they're going to fall apart quickly. Really leather, um, if you're not vegan, is a really good investment. So I really love Oxfords. And so these are from Barney's, which is no longer, sadly. But I've probably had these shoes about 15 years. And these are like a green cat toe with a gray leather. Um, I also have these Oxfords that are fake pony hair. Nice. So I like these. And then for a more casual look, I do love some sneakers. So yeah, they're cool. Really yeah, cool. these are, um, these are actually a collector item and I wore them a lot, but these were a collaboration with Tiffany's. And so it's the Tiffany blue. And when I would wear them, people that knew about sneakers would freak out on me that I was wearing them. <laughs> Like, what are you doing? Yeah, what are you doing? But I'm not one to like, you know, keep things and not, like I said, with the jewelry and everything, like I love to to really wear them and, and to make the, the most out of them if I'm going to keep them, right? So I haven't worn these in a while, but I am keeping them for sure because I know eventually when I'm ready to let these go that they're going to be a moneymaker. Yeah, they're very, very cool. Did you buy them when the collaboration had just first come out? Was your intent to buy them because it was the collaboration or did you just kind of stumble across them? So I feel really lucky that I am friends with somebody 
um, named Sean Cliver, who is an artist and he's a, he really is well known for skateboarding and he does skateboarding decks and, and with the skateboarders, they love doing collaborations with sneaker companies. And so he had a deal with Nike and that they would give him shoes every so often. And he generously gifted these to me. Even better. Yeah. Oh my goodness. What yes. an incredible gift. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so, you know, it's really nice to have friends that are, you know, creative and succeeding in their own way and, you know, just having these wonderful relationships and, and seeing creatives um, succeed is, has been a real wonderful thing in my life. So I feel very grateful. That's amazing. Really love that. Um, now, is there a dream fashion item, something that you don't currently own that you would love to own? So I'm always on the hunt for the perfect leather moto jacket. It's okay. so hard to find. Um, I think All Saints does a really great moto jacket, um, and I just haven't splurged on it yet. I know eventually, like I said, I love a good deal, so I'm always on the hunt for the right moto jacket. It's really hard to find the good combination of, you know, thinness, the fit, not having all the bells and whistles on them. Sometimes it has too many buttons, too many flashy things. I also tend to wear a lot of gold, rather silver, and a lot of the moto jackets have silver on it. So it's like one of these things that like, I know in my head that I want, but I just haven't found the perfect thing yet. That's it, it's the unicorn piece. Yes. One day it will magically appear and it will be the perfect one. And I imagine with being quite tall and having quite a long torso, yeah. as you said, that's a real crucial factor of getting one that's the right length for your body. Exactly, exactly. So, um, you know, I, it would probably have to be a men's jacket, but then a t tailoring a leather moto jacket is not really ideal, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, good luck. I hope you managed to find one. Thank you. <laughs> Do you have a piece of fashion advice that you would give to your younger self? I think I did pretty well growing up. I think I really stuck to what I loved. It wasn't always the most popular. Um, I wish I did learn about vintage earlier and not really got caught up on the labels. Growing up in the 90s, I, it was really popular to wear like the designer brand names all over your clothes. And I definitely did that. I wore the Calvin Klein, the Fila. Um, it's a, a good story is that when my parents would ground me, um, my punishment was that I wasn't allowed to wear my designer clothes. <laughs> <laughs> like, here's a basic plain t-shirt. That's all you're getting. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, I don't, I don't even know if they were real designer clothes. My dad would bring me to a place where like things fell off the truck. So like, I don't think, it, but it didn't matter back then. It just had it all over, you know, and people yeah. thought that that's what it was. So um, I would say, yeah, not to, not to follow all of the trends, really be true to yourself. And I, and even still today, I don't really follow the trends. I would say, um, you know, just following my instincts and always just being, a, buying what I'm attracted to and that I love. And then that's what I want to invest in. I think it's really interesting that your shopping sense and your fashion sense is really instinctual. It's something that comes from within you rather than external influences, which is quite uncommon. Most people, they are so driven by the external influences of what they should buy. I think it's really refreshing to speak to somebody who it's a really internal instinctual thing. Thank you. Yes. And I guess like that's how, I mean, I wouldn't consider myself a trendsetter, but I think that's how trends tend to start, right? Like you, I mean, cause I've been around it working in fashion. So I've seen the people that create these mood boards and mood walls for the designers and they travel the world and they'll see like what's going on in the world, like what's going on in art, what's going on, um, you know, it, uh, socially, politically, um, different things like that. And they take from those and they take, and they really take that inspiration and then they kind of create their own thing. And so similar with me, like I love traveling. I love going to museums, music. Um, I go to flea markets and, you know, for example, like 
I recently bought this bracelet, which is a sweetheart bracelet from the 40s, I believe. And people, the, the men used to give these bracelets to their sweethearts before they went off to war. And so I found this in a flea market in Ohio when I was working on a movie last year. And so I'm like, oh, this is like, I get so many compliments on it because uh, no one really knows it. And then there's a story behind it too. So I, I really just love, love collecting things like that. That's brilliant. That's so yeah. cool. What would you say is the favorite project you've worked on? Can you, have you got a favorite project that you've worked on throughout your career? It's a, this one's a hard one. I think I, I love jobs based on the travel at this point in my life. Um, I really like to choose the jobs based on where it's going to go. So one of my favorite projects was Godzilla versus King Kong. And I spent three months in Hawaii and four months in Australia. And then I got to go to Hong Kong for 10 days as well. So that job was really special um, just because of the places. I got to live at the beach for almost six months in, in, in accommodations I probably would never have been able to afford myself. And I got to meet a lot of wonderful people. And so I would say that was my favorite job so far. That's incredible. What an amazing yeah. thing to have worked on. Yeah. Oh, Lindsay, it has been so fascinating talking with you today. You have been an exceptional off the hanger guest. Thank you so much for talking to me. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please remember to like and subscribe and you can find a link to the Costume Consultant website in the description box below.